Okay. So everyone should have their SketchUp model complete. All right, today we're gonna look at how to cut a section. Okay, we're gonna learn how to cut a section in SketchUp and then bring that into Photoshop, okay? The process of cutting the section is very much exactly the same as creating the floor plan, but we're gonna do it on a different plane, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and take a peek at how we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna start by building that cube again, that same cube that we built when we created our elevations, okay? The reason why I do that is to make sure that I have a flat orthogonal plane that I'm creating the section from. Now you don't have to build the cube if you know you have a flat surface on your on your building that you can cut the section from, all right? Um, for those of you that don't know where the section tool is, if you go up to, let's see, view, toolbars, you can then turn on your different tool sets. So you might turn on large tool set and you can also turn on section, okay? And that will give you the section tool up here in the upper right hand corner. All right, so I'm gonna click on that section tool. All right, and if I hold my, if I move my mouse around to the different portions of my, of my building, I do have an orthogonal plane that I could work on. So I technically don't have to do the, uh, the cube, but the cube works well uh, just to be sure that what it is that you're creating is in fact orthogonal. So you're not creating a funky section, all right? So you could just create a quick square, extrude it, the height doesn't matter for this, okay? And then from here, I can go ahead and click on my section marker, bring it over to the side of my cube. Notice that the section uh, tool is currently red. It's also red if I go over here. So I know that these two surfaces are both uh, the same, okay? But if I move it down to here, when, it, when it's pink, we know that it's not correct. We would not get a section that we actually want, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's red, just like so. I'm gonna click on that surface and that will go ahead and activate my section plane. All right, so from here, and this is a little bit different than the floor plan, or uh, when, we, when we did the floor plan, is I can click on the move tool, okay? I click on the move tool and click on my section marker and I can start to move it throughout my building until I get to an area that I'm happy with, okay? So when you're cutting a section, you wanna ask yourself, what is important? What are you trying to show in the section, okay? So it's nice to see you know, the thickness of materials and the roofing and you know, the beams like you can see in mine, those are all nice things, but there are several of you that I know have nice two, maybe two story spaces, okay? So think about what it is that you're showing, all right? For me, it's important to show probably the thickness of uh, some of these uh, walls that I have in my, in my space. And it's also important to show these, probably these transom windows that I have up here, uh, right up here in my building, okay? So you'll need to ask yourself that question is what exactly are you trying to show in you know, on the interior of your building, okay? I'm not so much focused on, you know, your interior partitions and your kitchen and, you know, the bed and the furniture that's inside. If you have all that stuff, that's great, but I'd rather focus more on the volume of the spaces, okay? What's actually uh, important to, to, you know, to most architects, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pick an area that I think is is nice, okay? I'm gonna say probably about like that, okay? So I get a little bit of the doors and the walls that are behind my section, and I'm also cutting through all the important aspects of my building, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click there, and I'm gonna leave my section marker uh, at that place, okay? So now that we have that set up and we're happy with the way that that looks, okay? Um, I can go ahead and create a scene for my section. Okay, I'm gonna create a scene just like I did my floor plan, just like I did all four of my elevations, okay? So I'm gonna go over to uh, camera, standard views, and you need to determine whether or not you're uh, front, back, left, or right, okay? I always forget with my model which one's which. Um, it's not back, all right? Uh, standard views, so we know it's not gonna be back or front. Let's try uh, nope, it's not that one either, so it's gonna be right. So standard views, right, and here's our section. So in the past, we've made a step beyond this that we, that we need to do to make it correct. What do we notice about our current section right now? It's in perspective. It's in perspective, right, thank you. So yes, it's in perspective. And although um, section perspectives can actually be very desirable. If, in fact, I created one for my thesis project that um, I think I probably used to talk about my project for probably half of my presentation. 
So there really are nothing wrong with a, with a section perspective, okay? And I would encourage you to even try to create one if you have a little extra time, okay? If you wanna include it into your portfolio, it's a really great piece. So what that would actually look like is something like this where you get to see the cut area of the building, but you're also getting to understand the materiality and the rest of the building at the same time, okay? So they can be a very powerful, um, a very powerful drawing inside your collection of drawings that you're ultimately presenting at the end of this semester, okay? So uh, that is an idea. But if you're gonna do a section perspective, do it something kind of like this at a nice angle, like an axonometric section perspective. Don't do it straight on where it just looks like a bad section. Okay, so think about if you're gonna do a, a, per, a section perspective, do it in an angle that actually makes sense where you can see the rest of your building uh, and you can see all of the materials and everything that, you're, that you've been you know, working hard towards, okay? So, but today for what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a typical section, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to camera, standard views, and I'm gonna stay on right, all right? And I'm gonna change the camera to parallel projection, all right? So all that I see are the back of my windows. I'm not seeing the, uh, the perspective of my walls or any of the other elements for my building, okay? So as soon as I get that, we'll go ahead and auto save like I do every single class that I do this. I, I never remember to turn that off at the beginning of the lecture. So we'll let that sit for just a second. Da, da, da. While this is doing, another reminder, and, and I know I reminded everyone of this last class, we don't have 10, for those of you that, you know, maybe have been using the extra few days. I've, you know, I've allowed 10 days to turn in any assignment after they are due. Uh, you won't have that ability from basically here on out. You're gonna have less and less time as we get close to the final submission. So every exercise, including the portfolio, is due next Wednesday, all right? So camera, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's turn off that autosave real quick. So I'm gonna go to uh, tools, no, window, preferences, general, I'll make it like 10 minutes. That should be enough to finish this portion of the exercise. So now that I have the section uh, created, I wanna go ahead and create a scene. So I wanna zoom out just a little bit so I have a little bit of white space on the outsides of my, of my canvas here, all right? So I'm gonna say about like that would probably be fine. I'm gonna go over to scenes and I'm going to, before I create the scene, I'm going to go to view, I'm gonna turn off my guides, my axes, and I'm also gonna turn off my section planes, okay? Don't turn off section cuts, because then you'll be looking at an elevation again, all right? And then, then I will then go ahead and create the scene. Remember that when you create the scene, it will save the scene exactly how it is currently on the screen, okay? So by me turning off the section cuts and the guides and all that good stuff, um, I won't have to turn it off if I click on it again in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit add scene, create scene from this style, and I can right click, rename it, go down here to the bottom, and I'm gonna say section. All right, easy enough, section. So from here, I can get rid of this little guy, I don't need him, my little scale figure, I'll add, I'll add one of my own into my, into my section later. And now that we have this, we can go ahead and go through that same process that we went through for our elevations and our floor plans, okay? So I'll go through this pretty quickly. I think everyone's probably pretty familiar with this process, all right? So my first style that I'm gonna export is gonna be probably my hidden line. I think by default is already that. So let's see, default styles, hidden line. Okay, yes, it didn't change. So I'm just gonna turn off my, my axes and that looks good. All right, and from here, I can go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and let's go ahead and create a folder for today's work. So Fall, New Folder, let's say Week 17A Content. All right, I'll go ahead and save my first view in here, Yosemite House, Section, Hidden Line and export okay so that'll be my first view actually did anybody catch what i what i did not do that i did the couple, last two classes i didn't increase my resolution so really important part you want to make sure that when you're actually when you're creating your section 
in Photoshop, they have nice high resolution so that you don't have a really pixelated SketchUp view, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, Export. Let's export this again, we'll just overwrite the previous one. And I'm gonna go to Options, I'm gonna uncheck Use View Size, and I'm gonna say about 4,000 pixels. Three to 4,000 is usually good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and I'm gonna export this view again. Yes, I will replace it. Okay, so that looks good. So from here, I am going to create a few more styles, okay? So I'm gonna do a sketchy, sketchy edge one. I'll do my typical pen gray. Let's see, where is it? No. Ooh, that's super sketchy, holy cow. Pen gray, okay, that's, that's the one I want right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my section plane again. And I'm gonna go through that same process, file export 2D graphic. Let's call this pen gray. And I'll hit export. Okay, so I'm only gonna do three. If you guys want to do, uh, you know what, let's actually do the x-ray again, I'll do four. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to hidden line. So I'm gonna go up to my uh, my styles, and I'm going to go to default styles, hidden line, all right, and I'm going to go over to edit, and I'm going to click on this little box right here, okay, just to the left of edge settings, or just to the right of edge settings, and I'm going to click on x-ray, okay, that allows me to see some of the interior components that lie beyond the faces that I originally could see, okay, so that looks good, <clears throat> turn off my axes again and let's export this view and I'll say export and last but not least let's go ahead and create our shadows layer all right so I'm gonna go over to uh, click on the edges panel okay I'm gonna uncheck edges okay and I am going to turn on my shadows Okay, so I'm gonna turn on shadows. Go down here into shadows. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Now I can't see anything currently. All right, and actually let's turn back on my edges just for a second so I can see my, see my shadows take place. Okay, so let's see here. Let's find something that will actually work. You may not actually see any shadows. Now that I think about it, you may not see shadows in the section. Let's see, you may have to also turn off section cuts. So I'm gonna turn off section cuts. Let's turn off x-ray. Oh, there we go. Now we're good. So I can go back to shadow. Now let's go ahead and find a shadow. I probably won't get much. Let's just... So about like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So from here I can go ahead and turn off my, I can turn on my section cut. In fact, now that I think about it, yeah, let's try that. This, it may not, I think as soon as I turn on the section cut, it's actually going to go away. But let's just find out real quick. So let's turn on section cuts. Okay, so it, it still adds the shadow. Um, I'll let you determine whether or not you think it's valuable for this particular view. I, I don't know that it will be because all the shadow that you're going to see will be cast on the interior of the space, okay? So if you want to do that, you can if that actually provides valuable information. Um, I may actually, in fact, you know what, let's do this instead. Let's not export the shadows. I'm going to actually add the shadows uh, in Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to add the shadows in Photoshop because it can be more selective in terms of what I want to show. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the views that we currently have. Okay, let's open up the views that we currently have in Photoshop. We'll watch all of my old pictures pop up. Da, da, da. So we'll turn off all of these. Okay, and let's go ahead and open up our hidden line drawing as our first one. So I'll do file open. Let's go to today's folder. 17A, let's go to hidden line. I'm gonna say open. 
Okay, that looks about the perfect, the perfect amount of white space around the buildings. That's ideally what you should be uh, trying to achieve is something that looks about like that. All right, so from here, I can go ahead and place my other two views on top. So place uh, x-ray on top, check mark, all right, file place. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, pen gray on top of that, okay, and then also we'll check that into place, okay? So as you're probably familiar with, let's go ahead and add our blending modes, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my background layer into my uh, into an actual editable layer. So I'm gonna say layer from background and say hidden line and hit okay. All right, and I'm gonna add the multiply blending mode to that, all right? Do the same thing to my other two layers so right click, let's rasterize it, and then I will add a multiply blending mode, and same thing with the top one. So right click, rasterize, and multiply. You see this okay? Let's turn off the light. Okay, so now we have kind of the beginnings of our section. So what's a typical characteristic of a section cut? What do we typically see in this view that we wouldn't see in an elevation? What would we do a little bit differently? Any ideas? Uh, yes, you would do that. So instead of adding uh, materials to the exterior faces, yes, you might add some materials to the interior faces. Yes, absolutely. Any other guesses to what, what else I might be referring to? So typically in a section cut, you're gonna poche the items that you're cutting through, right? Okay, so if you've ever created a section, you would typically poche those items. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in to my section, okay? Come on, let me zoom in. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to the section. All right, and I'm gonna start to poche those different elements, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Actually, I want to turn down a couple of these items just a little bit. So this is going to be my x-ray. That's a little too intense. I'm going to say like 50%, okay? That looks a little bit better. And now I can start to poche. So I'm going to create a new layer for that poche, all right? Actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to add, I'll add a, a, a fill layer here in just a second. But to do that poche, I'm going to click on my quick selection tool. Actually, I'm going to click on my magic wand tool and I'm gonna select all the areas in my base drawing that I'm cutting through, okay? So this is a very valuable, uh, and, and if not one of the most important parts of creating the section. So it allows you to understand what items you're cutting through in the drawing, okay? So the first item that I'm cutting through is gonna be this, okay? And SketchUp easily tells you what that is because it gives you the bold lines around the areas that you're cutting through, okay? So it shouldn't be hard to identify what areas need poche and what areas don't okay turn off these other two layers real quick all right so we have some structure we have some window mullions i also have this big layer of structure down here below okay and i'm gonna do that same thing to the rest of the building whoops step too far select all these items these are all important ones Okay, just a couple more pieces, and there we go. So those are gonna be all of the areas minus the ground that we're actually cutting through, all right? So from here, now that I have all those selected, I can go up to layer, I can go over down to the very bottom, or not to the very bottom, about midway through, I'm gonna click on new fill layer, okay? So again, I know I've asked this the last couple classes, but why, why would we add a fill layer here instead of a very traditional regular layer. Why would we add a fill layer? Yes, exactly. And I can go through and I can update the color later on if I want to without having to go through and reselect all of those different spaces. All right. So I'm going to click on new fill layer, solid color, and I'm going to call this wall poche. And I'm going to hit OK. And by default, it's going to go ahead and make all those things black. So what color you want for poche is up to you. All right. I like a nice like medium gray. All right, so I can actually still continue to see my line work that surrounds it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. All right, another thing that you may want to document is the actual color of this gray, okay? 
And the reason why is because I'm gonna end up doing the same thing for my ground plane, all right? So right now, I'm just gonna say 100, 100, 100, all right? And that's an easy, just an easy number to remember. It's a nice medium gray. And it typically works pretty well, all right? So I'm gonna say okay. And now we can see all of the wall areas and the wall planes that we're currently cutting through, okay? So the next part that we can add is we can add our, our, uh, our ground plane, all right? So to do that, I am going to, just like I did for the elevation, I am going to use my lasso tool and I'm gonna create a ground plane for my, for my building, all right? So I'm gonna make it look a little bit uneven so that it actually looks like um, we're cutting through the ground in Yosemite. All right, I'm gonna do the best I can to go right underneath my building. All right, and then maybe we go down about like that, wrap it all the way around, and about like that, okay? I can add a few more little areas. Obviously, I messed up in a few areas, okay? So I can click on my regular marquee tool, all right? I'm gonna hold down Shift, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the areas that I missed. Okay, so like that, down here at the bottom, and even about like that. Okay, everyone see how I did that? So just using my marquee tool, I can hold down shift, I can also hold down alt if I wanna subtract areas from my selection marquee. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and add the same color, or I'm gonna, also, I'm gonna create another fill region for my ground plane. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do a fill region for this one because it makes the process of actually making, of adding the grass a little bit, a little bit harder. It's possible, it just takes a few extra steps. Okay, but I can go ahead and go over to edit, fill. Actually, let's create a new layer real quick for that, for the ground plane. I'm gonna say ground plane, and I'm gonna go over to edit, fill, and I'm gonna go under use, I'm gonna go over to color, and I'm gonna type in that same gray, so 100, 100, and 100 under my RGB values. And I'm gonna hit OK, and hit OK again. Okay, and you'll notice that it's filled it with the exact same gray as, whoops, as we did the rest of our interior spaces. All right? So there's a couple little areas that, uh, that could actually be fixed just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this a little bit different. Let me go back up just a, just, just a hair. All right, let me fix this little area right here. Okay, so we're gonna add that. Let's also remove the area inside the space. About like that. And I also have a little area right here that I need to remove as well. I'm actually gonna make this a little bit different of a color than my walls, okay? Just so that I can actually see the difference between the walls and my ground plane. So I'm actually gonna make this black. Okay, so here, I'm gonna go ahead and say edit fill, and let's add black. So instead of hitting color, you can hit color if you wanna put a different color other than white or black or 50% gray, but you also have those options down here. So I'm gonna say black, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have a ground plane for my building, all right? If you wanna add an actual like foundation pad, you can also do that. All right, so the actual foundation the building is sit sitting on. All right, so sometimes I see people just do like a kind of a typical uh, mat slab or something like that. So if you wanna do that, you could go like this, just make a nice little rectangle, okay? You could also add footings or you know whatever you want to make it a little bit more realistic. That's completely up to you, all right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this under uh, ground plane. I'm gonna go ahead and go edit, fill, and I'm gonna say uh, color, and I'm gonna add that same 100% gray, okay, and there we go. All right, so that looks a little bit better. Okay, so let's continue to add more detail. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, a few more details to my ground plane, all right, so that it makes it, make it look a little bit more realistic. So under that same layer, under ground plane, I'm gonna add some grass, but not to the front of my building like we did for the elevation, but only on the side. Because remember, we're not cutting through uh, the top of the, or we're not cutting through the part of the ground plane where you would see grass in the front of the building, okay? So, with ground plane selected, I am gonna go over to my clone stamp tool, right here, clone stamp tool, 
click on clone stamp. I'm gonna change the brush to 134, which is grass, okay? Make sure the size of the brush is fairly large, okay? I'm gonna hold down Alt to select the color of my ground plane, the black. And from here, I can start to add some of that grass detail to the view. Okay, so it might be about, about like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing over to this side. All right, reselect the black from down here and start to fill that in. About like that, okay? Any questions about either of those two processes? Good, okay. So we're starting to get a little bit more detail in terms of what exactly we're showing inside or for our section, okay? We're now cutting through the building. We have a nice gray po oh, poche, and we're also cutting through the ground plane of the building, okay? So from here, I can go through and I can add details like shadows. I can add details like background imagery and scale objects, okay? Uh, you can also do some, uh, you can also add some materials for the inside of the building, okay? So I know we're probably familiar with a handful of these ideas, okay? I'm gonna go through a couple of them and then I'll go ahead and let you guys loose, okay? So the next thing we're gonna look at is, let's go ahead and look at shadows, okay? Now I'm gonna add my own shadows for this exercise because I wanna have a little bit more control of what I'm actually seeing inside my building in terms of the light, okay? So remember when we actually did diagramming, we actually did a diagram from a wall section, right? And we showed how the light came inside the building. So this is actually a really good opportunity to do a similar process, okay? So I'm gonna create a new layer, a new layer, and I'm gonna call this shadows. All right, so shadows like so, okay? And I am going to add my own uh, light inside of this building, okay? So with that shadow layer, and I'm gonna put it on the top, all right? I'm gonna use my, instead of my lasso tool, I'm gonna use my polygonal lasso tool, all right? Excuse me. And I'm gonna draw the area of the light coming inside my building. So I'm gonna say maybe that light comes in about like that, okay? And I'm making this up somewhat, okay? I mean, there's obviously logic behind what I'm, what I'm saying here. But I'm gonna go ahead and add an area of light where I think that sunlight would actually be coming in, okay? So that's gonna be my first area, all right? And I'm gonna fill that with a color that would resemble the light, okay? So same thing over here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the edge of that window. And I was also holding down the plus sign, okay? I'm holding down the plus sign so that I don't lose this area over here, okay? So I'm gonna say shift, I'm holding down shift, and I'm gonna click down like this, all right? And maybe that's giving some kind of a light about like that. Okay, so it actually will combine those marquees, that's not a problem, no big deal. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right, so again, holding down the shift sign or shift key, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a beam of light for this side. All right, so we'll have something that looks about like that, okay? So this is gonna be our, our layer for shadows. And you know what, I'm actually gonna delete this shadows layer. I'm gonna do a fill layer for this one as well just in case I don't like the color of the lighting that I'm actually adding later on, okay? So with that said, I can go over to image, or I'm sorry, layer, new fill layer, solid color, and I'm gonna say, uh, let's actually not call this, it's not really shadow, it's actually light. All right, so I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna give this a nice wash of maybe like a gold or something along those lines, okay? I may decide to change my mind a little bit later as soon as I actually see how it looks with the materials that I add inside that building. Okay, so obviously the opacity is way too strong, so I'm gonna say something maybe like 30%, okay? And I'm gonna leave it like that for now, all right? I'll leave it like that for now, I'm gonna come back once I've added a few materials to the back, to my, to my building. 
okay? So before we add the materials, let's go ahead and add a background image. Okay, so last class I went through the process of doing that. I think we're all pretty familiar with finding a background image. All right, you can go to Creative Commons, find a nice background image of Yosemite. All right, and we're going to create a image mask of that background. So I've already downloaded a couple. I'm gonna go ahead and go to File Place, and I'm just gonna go to last week's content. I believe, actually it would be week 16B, or A. And let's see, textures, let's find one that will work for this exercise. I'm gonna say maybe this one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to File Place. Actually, that's a little bit too small. If I stretch this too much, I don't want the image to distort. I'm gonna say Don't Place. I'm gonna check the size of my image here. It's a little big, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change this to about 20. That's still plenty, plenty large for what we're doing in this class. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, file place, select my background image, and I can now stretch it accordingly. Okay, remember that I'm holding down shift to hold on to the proportion of this as much as possible. All right, so I'm going to hold down shift, and go ahead and hit place. All right, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this by about 50%, just so that I can kind of get an idea of where my horizon line is. Okay, so I'm going to say something about like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to do Control T, and I'm going to stretch it just a little bit because I want a little bit more of the sky above. But in the end, I'm going to ultimately end up just cropping off this area to make it look better. Okay, so I'm going to say File Place, and then from here, I'm going to go ahead and deselect my image, okay, my background image. Let's actually call this background image. All right, I'm going to turn off all of my other layers, turn off ground plane, turn off my wall poche, shadows. All right, I'm going to click on my original hidden line, and I'm going to use my magic wand tool, select around my building, okay, like so. What, are, what, what other areas do we think might be really valuable to include that background image? The windows. The windows, exactly. So remember that this is a section. All right, we do have windows in our building and I want to be able to see through them. I want to see what's actually behind those windows. Okay, so I'm also going to select my windows right here. Okay, uh, this might be a window on the other side as well. I'm going to say, I don't know if it is or not actually. I'm going to say that it's not just for clarity purposes. Okay, and now that I have that, I am going to duplicate my hidden line drawing hit OK, and I'm going to move it right below my background image. Okay, and now I'm going to turn on my background image, click on it, and I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask. Okay, now you'll see that I now have a, um, it now cuts around our cabin. Okay, so that looks good. That's, that's the way that I want that to actually look. Alright, so that looks good. So I can go ahead and turn on the rest of, uh, rest of some of my line work. All right, so I'll turn on the hidden line drawing. I can turn on my shadows, okay, some of my other layers, my ground plane, okay, and I'm gonna turn this background image back to 100%. And let's move this actually, well, let's move my ground plane up to the top, okay, that looks good. That's the way that we want that. And let's turn on wall push A, okay, so it's starting to look a little bit better, okay. So let's go through a couple more steps. I'm gonna go ahead and crop my image here. All right, I don't need that much ground plane. I don't need that much sky. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. All right, and I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to my windows to make the glazing look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so right now it looks like it, exactly the same as the surrounding portion of my building. All right, so I'm gonna go over to the hidden line drawing select that, use my magic wand tool, and I'm gonna select my four windows, all right? And I'm gonna click on, uh, I'm gonna create a new fill layer. So I'm gonna go over to layer, new fill layer, solid color. And I'm gonna call this window fill. All right, and I'm gonna hit okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice, maybe like a grayish blue color. I'm gonna say okay. And let's move it up towards the top layer. And I'm gonna give this an opacity of about, we'll say 30%. Maybe a little bit more. 
40%. Okay, the main goal is that I want it to look a little bit different than the other side or than the outside of my building. Okay, so it might look something kind of like that. I'd say that looks, that looks pretty successful. All right, so from here, we're almost there. From here, I can start to add some interior materials to the inside of my building. All right, and uh, you might add a scalar object to the section. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to file uh, place. I've already downloaded some of those materials. Okay, so let's see, that's a roof texture. So here's a brick. I'm gonna go ahead and use that brick. I kind of like that. I'm gonna say place, and I'm gonna reduce the size of the brick to make sure that the scale is appropriate for my drawing. Okay, so uh, everyone should probably has a good idea about how big a brick is. Okay, so it's about four inches tall. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tile this. I'd say that's probably about the right size. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tile this like so. I'm gonna now duplicate that layer and I'm gonna move it over about like that. Okay, and that's probably good. I actually don't have too much interior wall. I'm gonna make this one texture by saying merge layers all right, and I'm gonna turn that off for just a second, and just like I did before, I'm gonna select that hidden line uh, drawing. I'm gonna duplicate, oh, actually I got my copy right here, so I can just move that up, up to there. And I am going to select the surfaces that I want to have that brick texture. All right, I'm gonna turn off the x-ray for now. And I am going to select this wall, and I'm gonna select these surrounding walls right here. Okay, the rest of it is basically mullion, okay, and door frame. All right, so I'm gonna select those walls and, actually not that one, and then from there, I can turn on my brick texture. I'm gonna select that texture layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer mask. Okay, we'll see now that we now have that brick as the texture inside the building, okay? If it's a little harsh, okay, you can always turn down the opacity, and it's a little harsh right now, it's a little bold. I could say maybe about 70% to lighten it up just a tiny bit, maybe like 80%, all right? And you can see here that uh, I'm very close to uh, having this finished, okay? I'm gonna move that sunlight layer up to the top, okay? That's a little intense, okay? So I'm gonna say maybe about 20%, okay? But that, you know, that has a nice effect, okay? I'd say that looks pretty good, all right? So I'm gonna add a scale object for my scene. So I'm gonna go to File Place. I'm gonna add one of my people. All right, I think last class I added maybe these two. I'm gonna say place, and I'm gonna place them into my scene, okay, and make sure that they're at the right scale. All right, I'm gonna say about like that, okay? And I'm gonna say file place, and I wanna make sure that they're behind my, my ground plane layer though, like that, so that we're not seeing the front of their feet, right? Okay, so I'd say that looks pretty good. Now there's a couple more little details that you know I can go and add. Like I could say I need some color for my mullions. All right, so I can go ahead and use my magic wand tool. And I'm gonna select all of my mullions, like so. Same thing over here, right here, right here, right there. All right, we also have a door frame. and a door. I'm just going to select all of that. I'm going to make them the same color. And one more over here. And we have some over here as well. It's technically, yeah, I think that looks about, about right. Okay. So from here, again, I'm going to go over to layer and I'm going to say new fill layer, solid color. And I'm going to say window mullions and trim and hit okay. And I'm gonna make this a little bit different of a color. I'm gonna make this a nice like silver, so maybe like a nice light gray. And I'm gonna say okay. And I'd say that looks pretty good, minus the fact that I missed a couple of those areas, but that's okay, I'll fix that in a second. All right, so there's not much else left, okay? I could add some color to the wood that's behind, uh, that's behind back here, okay? So again, I'm gonna select my hidden line drawing, use my magic wand, I'm also gonna select these little side lights right there. This area here. Looks pretty good. Select these little areas. 
and I'm gonna give it some color. You could also give it a texture should you choose to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to layer, new fill layer. I'm just gonna say uh, wood color. I'll pick a nice like soft brown, soft tan. Okay, say okay, and that would be pretty good. Okay, any questions about how I did either of those steps? Okay, good. Hopefully I'll see a, a perfect section from everybody today. All right, so that looks pretty good. So that's what I'm basically expecting from everyone here. You can also, if, I, if there's anything that I didn't cover that I mentioned maybe in the floor plans discussion last week or the elevations uh, lecture last week as well, those are also good tools that you could use to add some nice effects to your section. All right, any questions? Good, okay, so it's 720 right now. Go ahead and take a 10 minute break if you need to. Other than that, we'll use the rest of the class to work on the sections, okay? Work on the floor plans if you haven't finished them yet, all right? And you also have portfolios to work on. So you have plenty to work on today. So I'd like to hopefully peek over everyone's shoulder for a few minutes and make sure everyone's doing okay. Other than that, you'll have the rest of the class to, to work on these items, okay?